Thomas Plain. Good afternoon, Johnson. Good afternoon, Morris. This is Waters. This is an endocyte, reddish in color. The typical endocyte is gray in color. Uh, this is less oxidized. But as I was looking, notice it's darker. There is a darker part in here. This is called magma mingling. Uh, for example, later on we will see the Columbia River basalts. There are three flows which have 14 to 17 percent iron. And if you compute their density, it's much heavier than the density of the crustalines. So those magmas should have never reached the surface of the Earth. A colleague of mine, back in Vang, at the University of Michigan, started adding a certain amount of water. And when you add up to about 3.5 to 4.1% water, the density of the magma becomes lower than the density of crustalines. It just reaches to the surface. So in some cases, uh, the density of the melt is less than the density of the crust. And barring any other complications, those magma simply rise to the surface. But in order to understand this, we need to understand what we call initial magma conditions. Unfortunately, as earth scientists, we are all brainwashed. We have a tendency, I think we have been taught that way, that we think temperature and pressure as independent variables. They are not independent variables. Temperature doesn't drop or rise by itself. You have to either introduce heat or withdraw heat from the system. A quantity called enthalpy. Pressure doesn't increase or decrease unless volume changes. So when we are thinking of the initial parameters of magma, we have to consider bulk composition, water content, oxygen partial pressure, temperature, as well as pressure. After that, we can impose various restrictions on the magma and see how the magma is going to behave and compare the results with what we see in the field. So, as we are going through these um, volcanic terrains, keep those things in mind. Uh, finally, I want to mention one other thing. Mount Hood, one of the mountains I think you will see, is very unique among these mountains in the sense that it is almost all lava. There are no pyroplastics. Only in one direction there is pyroplastic, but that is not because of explosive eruption. It's because of the dome cones. So, why did that particular mountain behave differently than the rest of these things? Did it not have enough water? Or was there something preventing the water to escape? Those are the type of questions you need to think about.